Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Rubenstein from the PlayStation blog. We're coming up on E3, and what is everybody excited about? Well, we don't have to wait for E3 to talk about Killzone 3. Steven Terheide all the way in from the Netherlands to talk about Killzone 3. How you doing? I'm Thanks so for coming pretty out. Pretty good, yeah. Uh, happy to be here. So, you know, it was about two years ago, leading into E3 2008, that we were showing Killzone 2 in a, in a similar state. You know, it was, it was playable, Absolutely. it was incredibly impressive. We were marveling over the, the reload animations and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, once the game was wrapped, and, and what did Gorilla turn their attentions to? Well, we still had the DLC, the downloadable content, to obviously uh, keep the fans occupied, and, and that's, that's what keep, kept a lot of the team occupied as well. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we went straight into Killzone 3, because uh, there was a lot of momentum in the team, where we really liked kind of what we did with Killzone 2. A lot of people but, liked it. <laughs> but we felt we could do a lot better. Uh, at, at the time, and we said, well, we, we just really need to kind of get, get that momentum, uh, keep that momentum, and, and go straight into Killzone 3. So we basically took it uh, yeah, day and date from when Killzone 2 launched, we went straight into Killzone 3. Now, I hear this a lot talking with, with devs. As soon as a game wraps, they're already, they're, they're already thinking about the things that they wanted to get in there and they couldn't do. Absolutely. So is that, what, what types of things uh, were, were you all looking at when, when Killzone 2 was done, where you thought, okay, we can do even better next time? Well, I think there's, there's always uh, there's always things that you leave on the cutting room floor. Uh, so there's a lot of ideas that are being tossed around, a lot of different things that we wanted to do. We always look back at our previous games, seeing uh, what kind of things really worked and that we wanted to bring on board this time around. But at some point, it's, it's pencils down. And everybody's got ideas, but you really have to kind of lock the game down because you have to ship it, and because you have to get it into people's hands. So a lot of stuff uh, that, that uh, we'll see in Killzone 3 is stuff that we've been thinking about uh, toying with for a long time. Uh, things like jetpacks, obviously they were in Killzone Liberation already. Yep. And that's something that we felt yeah, that would really work well in first person. Uh, but uh, in Killzone 3, that's the first time that we'll actually be playing with jetpacks as well. So that's one of the things that we, that we initially took. Obviously, there's a lot of improvements and other things that we want to do as well. Uh, when the game is out there, you get a lot of feedback, you get a lot of suggestions from our fans on things that we need to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, so all those kind of things we take on board as well, and that feeds, feeds into what we do for Killzone 3. I know you got a lot of feedback on controls. I know you uh, released a patch in Killzone uh, 2 uh, later on uh, after the game was out. Yep. So talk about controls. Uh, I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions about the, the Killzone controls. Yeah, there's a lot of opinions uh, around that subject. Uh, obviously, uh, it's, it's something to do with accessibility being able to kind of to go from one game to the next game that that, you're from, that the controls are familiar that you know uh, what to expect uh, Killzone uh, 2 has a slightly different way of approaching the controls in terms of uh, the weight mm -hmm. we really wanted to have that feeling that uh, that you're yeah you're, you're carrying a loaded weapon and right. it's heavy and we do want you to kind of uh, get get that sensation but at the same time the uh, the, the lag uh, kind of the, the responsiveness of your controls we felt we could improve that and we needed to improve that uh, so we remedied most of that in the patch, uh, but we're taking it a lot further for Killzone 3. So it's one of the things, one of the one of the key areas that we really want to want to improve on um, what we did for Killzone 2. One of the unique control aspects I really think worked in Killzone 2 that we hadn't seen ever before was a first person cover system. Is that coming back in Killzone 3? Any changes to that? Absolutely. The the, the, the cover system is something that uh, that we felt uh, worked quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it caters to kind of the more cautious player. Uh, the run-and-gun player won't use it as much, so we want to cater to both kind of players in Killzone 3, make sure that the run-and-gunner has some new options as well. So that's why uh, things like the new Brutal Melee system is going to be in there, where you can actually get up close to those enemies and take them out, which is really satisfying, and that's going to really please the run-and-gun kind of guys. But at the same time, we want to improve the lean and peak system as well, so we've made it a lot more snappier. Uh, so actually, when you're close to cover, you can actually uh, kind of really easily snap into it. Uh, we've got things like slide into cover, so you can actually mm -hmm. run up to cover, uh, press the button, and you just slide into it. And once you're in cover, you can actually hop over it as well. So it, it all feels a lot more intuitive, and it's a lot more kind of uh, motion-based. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of work on the, ongoing under the hood uh, for the, the Linux system. Now, uh, when, when Killzone 2 first came out, or even before it came out, and we were two years ago looking at it for the first time, everyone was mm -hmm. just wild, just floored by the graphics, the, the visual fidelity. Um, I know a lot of people get hung up on visuals, and we talked about controls, but, mm -hmm. but visually, what did you do to the engine? Was there anything you could do? I mean, did you really, did you reach the roof? Or? <laughs> um, that, that's what you always say as you're near the end of the project. It's kind of, well, we're, we're, we're maxing it out. We're firing on all cylinders. Yeah. And, and we really think that we did, a, we did a good job. But then kind of you start looking back at your code and at all the stuff that you've written, and you think, well, actually, we, we, we can do more. And there's titles coming out after us uh, that show that, that a lot more can be done. Uh, the guys at, from Uncharted, the guys from God of War, they, they did an awesome, awesome job yeah. in pushing it even further. 
and of course there's some little friendly competition going on with kind of okay can we can we step it up again can we take it a notch further uh, so the guys on, on the engine side they're they're really trying to kind of optimize it even further and they've, they've done a lot of kind of technical uh, uh, technological advancements and to make sure that we can do much bigger environments this time around uh, so there's a lot more scope and a lot more kind of grandeur to the environments which uh, for the player obviously means that you've got a lot more routes to take it's not as uh, as corridor based as mm -hmm. skills on two was uh, so it, it feels a lot more open uh, while at the same same time we're adding a lot more detail into those levels uh, so in order to do that we've had to develop some very intelligent streaming systems which basically means that everything and anything in this in the game is now streamed uh, it's all seamless and you completely get rid of all the loading hiccups and the levels just are a lot lot bigger and that's probably one of the biggest areas of improvement that you'll see on the visual side just these massive environments with even more detail than you had in Killzone 2. I think you mentioned intelligence let's talk about the AI you were you frequently were not alone in Killzone 2 uh, as long as you were you were with uh, Rico among others uh, talk about uh, but, but they, I don't know that they necessarily helped as much as they could have I, I felt like I was reviving <laughs> Rico uh, let's yeah. talk about uh, you know what you're doing with that and let's talk about the Rico character, who's pre proved to be maybe a little divisive. Uh, Rico is uh, quite the character. There's a lot of emotion circling around the character. It's, it's on the one hand, it's great to have people uh, respond to a character in, in such a strong and emotional way. Uh, at the same time, it shouldn't be out of frustration. Mm. Uh, so we do want to make uh, make him a more usable buddy. Uh, so there's things in there in, uh, in Killzone 3 where uh, Rico can actually revive you. So there's a buddy revive system in there. You're downed as he, if he's in the neighborhood, he can actually revive you. Uh, as you could do with him, uh, so that's that's a little bit of a kind of uh, reciprocity right there. Mm -hmm. That it's not just you yeah, doing all the heavy lifting; he's actually helping you out. Um, so that's one thing that we're doing. Obviously, we're ironing out a lot of his behavior issues, where he's in your line of fire, where he's swearing all of the time. All the swearing will be gone. Those kind of things. The colorful language is gone. Uh, so uh, we make we make sure that he's a lot more useful this time around. Uh, and in terms of AI, because you because you've got. Uh, larger environments, yeah. more open environments. There's a lot more options for those guys. So for both the uh, the enemy AI as well as your friendly AI, uh, there's whole new approaches, and no encounter will ever play the same. Uh, that's already something that you saw in Killzone 2. You could play the same thing over and over again, and it, it wouldn't feel scripted. Mm -hmm. It would always feel fresh, and they would do different kind of behavior, sneak up on you if you if you weren't looking. Those kind of things. You'll see that a lot more in Killzone 3, simply because the environments are bigger. So they have more space to play with, uh, and we even take it up into the air with the jetpacks that yep. we've got. We've got jetpack enemies in there, which adds a whole new uh, dimension to the whole gameplay. And some nice death animations with those uh, jetpacks as well. Uh, if, if you're not ready to, to talk about multiplayer, I understand, uh, but if you could just summarize one, what would be the, the major difference, if you could just pick one thing between Killzone 2 and Killzone 3, just, just across, what would be the, the uh, major Across the game? Across the entire game. Across the entire game. I think it's, it's variety. It's probably a key word there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what Killzone uh, 2 suffered from was um, the amount of variety that was in the environments, which was in the kind of the minute-to-minute -minute stuff that you did, uh, and we were really wanted to up that. So a lot of the variety in Killzone 2 took place in kind of the final couple of chapters, where all of a sudden you got this, this big mech suit, and a lot of people didn't reach that stage. Obviously, we analyze a lot of the data from the trophies that people unlocked, from the multiplayer data. So we look at what people do, mm -hmm. and we take on board the feedback that uh, we've gotten from the forums and uh, well from you guys, uh, just figuring out, okay, what are the things that we need to do? And variety is a big thing. So on the level uh, we've got on show today, uh, there's already four different sections in there with very distinct gameplay. Uh, there's one portion on rails where you're on an intruder actually firing down, uh, which is completely different from anything that we've done before. Then there's some on-foot combat where you actually start to encounter these jetpack enemies, mm -hmm. which are new enemies, kind of new kind of experience. Then you get a jetpack yourself, which is aerial combat, which is, again, a game changer. Just completely changes whatever you do. And then finally you get this big weapon of mass destruction, which is the WASP uh, rocket launcher. And again, that's just in one level, and we're going to do that throughout the game. So not just the environments, that will be very, very different from what you see in Killzone mm -hmm. 2. Um, but there will also be a lot of different kind of gameplay mechanics, a lot of gameplay experience that people will have throughout the game. Yeah, and a lot of new weapons uh, that, that look really cool, and you're, you're going to want to see when, when, when more is shown. Now, uh, Stephen, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't relay to you fan requests. Uh, when, when, I, when I told everyone we're going to be seeing Killzone 3, this is what they wanted to hear. So I know that you sure. probably can't respond to these yet, but uh, we've had requests. Uh, MJX says hopefully multiplayer will include a party mode of some sort. Um, please keep custom soundtracks for multiplayer, like in Killzone 2, that was MZ83. A lot of people were talking about co-op, they really want to see co-op, so just, mm -hmm. that's what they're saying. Uh, a special edition, people, now you know mm -hmm. people love the game when they're saying, 
can I buy more of it? So yep. people would love to see a special edition for Killzone 3. Uh, fully customizable controls. Um, that was uh, a big request. I know people like to, you know, you're playing a lot of different shooters and they want to mm -hmm. uh, keep the, the same type of controls throughout the games. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and last one, uh, people were asking us to acquire some snipers. People who did make it to the end of the multiplayer, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, to the, to the top of the rank there, uh, mm -hmm. they would like to see a prone position. So mm -hmm. uh, I know you really can't address any of these right now, but I, I thought it was important. Um, I, I can give yep. that to you if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, yeah. uh, you know, people, uh, they, they, they're really passionate about Killzone, and uh, I'm really passionate about Killzone, <laughs> and, and really excited for what I've seen today, and I, mm -hmm. and I think you all will be too. So. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, this, this kind of stuff, uh, we read a lot of what's out there on the internet. Obviously, we can't trust anything and everything, but uh, we do read a lot of those things, and we really stay in touch with the fan base. So uh, this stuff is, is greatly appreciated because we, we take it all on board.